Hi, I'm Katie Farrell. I'm an author, a registered nurse, and a mom and wife to some of the pickiest eaters on the planet. People say that eating healthy is bland and boring, but I'm here to show you a better way with wholesome, simple recipes. All of my dishes are stamped with my family's seal of approval. Think you can't eat those brownies and pasta? Think again. I'm here to share my secrets with all of you. Here's what we're cooking today on Dashing Dish. It's my favorite time of year, Christmas. I wake up before everyone else and get cooking early so we can enjoy a meal together after opening presents. Today, I'm cooking up some of my Christmas brunch classics. My skinny overnight hash brown egg bake, my homemade gingerbread coffee creamer, and one of my family's favorites, monkey bread. Come celebrate with us. It's Christmas morning and it's really early in the day and I'm getting started on breakfast for my entire family. It's always been a tradition that I wake up before the rest of my family does and I get started so that we can open presents and everyone can have a delicious hot meal ready to go. What I like to do is I like to prepare a lot of the food as much as I can the night before and this is the perfect dish to do so. You could also make it the morning of and that's what I'll be doing today. It's the skinny overnight hash brown bake. Traditions can be a special part of relationships and create meaningful memories with those we love. Some of my favorite traditions happen around Christmas time. My annual gingerbread house competition is one of my all time favorites. Every year, my husband Sean and I host the competition in our home. We gather our married friends together and build gingerbread houses with a different theme each year. We've done everything from a movie theme to famous landmarks and everything in between. Each couple builds a house together and every year the competition seems to get more intense. We often joke and say that it's become more of a marriage building exercise than a Christmas party, especially with a little friendly competition that's thrown into the mix. We always have our Dashing Dish audience pick the winner, and the night finally comes to a close by picking the theme for the following year. So I'm gonna start with a sweet potato, and that's what makes this dish skinny or healthier than most traditional egg bakes. Typically we have hash browns at the bottom of an egg bake, but instead I'm using a sweet potato, which is loaded with nutrition and fiber. And so I'm just gonna grate one more sweet potato. I already have two grated up in a nine by 13 pan here. So I'm gonna grate it up and get a good arm workout to start the day. And I think a lot of times, you know, when we think about nutrition, we overanalyze things. We think, okay, how do I eat healthy? What's the latest you know, trend right now? Should I eat carbs, should I not? But really, if it comes down to it and we're just thinking, what did God create for us to eat? This is a great way to just think very simply, if God created a sweet potato, then I know it's good for me. And it's also a really good way to start your day because it's a complex carbohydrate. It's slow digesting, so it'll give you sustained energy for your whole morning. Now I'm gonna just see if this sweet potato fills the rest of the pan. You just wanna do two to three medium sweet potatoes. And I already peeled it before grating it, but if you just wanna take a shortcut, you could just peel it. You could also just chop it up in really fine bits, however you prefer. I like to grate it just so it's more of a hash brown texture at the bottom. You could also use different vegetables than sweet potato, so if you like to use broccoli or cauliflower. You could put any kind of veggies at the bottom of the pan as long as they're steamed first. You just don't want to put raw vegetables in this because they'll never really cook through. So if you saute some veggies or you steam them and then you put them at the bottom of the pan, it'll be great in this dish. And then I'm going to add to this some deli meat. Now, I, when it comes to deli meat, I don't mind deli meat as long as you look for a few things. You want to look for organic, you want to look for non-cured, nitrate-free, and those are good things to look for on labels when it comes to deli meat. And here I have some lean ham, and so that's also what makes this dish a little bit healthier. Typically in egg bakes, we see things like pork sausage, things that are very high in saturated fat, and so just choosing a lean meat is a great swap out. And for this one, I chose ham because I know that that's what my whole family will love, especially the guys. But you could do Canadian bacon, you could do center cut bacon, 
You could do turkey, chicken sausage, you get the point. So anything that's a lean form of meat. You could also leave it out altogether if you want this to be a vegetarian dish, that's totally fine. But this will kind of bulk it up and give you some extra protein and also some flavor. So we're gonna put that at the bottom of a pan as well. So like I said, you could do all of this the night before, the entire thing, cover it with foil and then pop it in your fridge, take it out the next morning and bake it. And then we are going to make the egg filling that will go into this egg bake. Now you only need six eggs. If you wanted to do egg whites, you could do that as well. You probably would wanna double the amount of eggs. Whenever I swap out an, a full egg for egg whites, I just do double the amount of egg whites. Then I have one cup of plain Greek yogurt, and this not only adds protein, it also adds creaminess to the dish without adding any butter or extra fat. And then I'm just gonna season my eggs, and this is just to taste. So I have a, some salt and pepper grinders here, and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And then I'm just gonna add probably about maybe a half teaspoon, so if you actually wanted to go ahead and measure, you could. But again, it's really up to your taste. And I know that there's gonna be kids eating this today, so I'm not gonna add a whole lot of pepper, just a little bit. And usually whenever I'm cooking for Maddie, I just do a very small amount, if any at all, if she's gonna be eating it. And then I'm gonna add some cheese. Now, I'm gonna save some of the cheese for the top, so I'm just gonna do one cup of cheese into the bowl and then save the other cup to go on top. And cheese is okay. I like to use Parmesan cheese a lot of times or feta cheese. Typically shredded cheeses have a lot more fat and it doesn't give you as much flavor. But for egg dishes and whatnot, I think that shredded cheese is just a must. Especially when you have your whole family eating it and you want everyone to, to enjoy. There are places to cut back and places to do swap outs. But in egg bakes, I think it's definitely needed. That, that cheesy flavor. So I'm gonna whisk this all together, and the Greek yogurt really does give it the creaminess as you can see. And we only needed six eggs for this recipe because of the Greek yogurt. It kinda helps bulk it up. I'm gonna whisk it until it's nice and creamy and combined. And then we're gonna pour it into the dish. Now, we do have some green onions in this recipe, but I will tell you that I know that my brother-in-law hates onions. I mean, he absolutely despises them. So I have them here for the recipe. And what you would wanna do, I'll show you how you chop up a green onion. And that's the great thing about this dish, like I said, is you can really just customize it. Now I'm gonna spread the egg out over the ham and the sweet potato. And the eggs will fluff up and bake up so that all of this kind of just marries together really nicely. Okay, that looks good. I'm just gonna do just a little salt on top, and then we'll finish it off with the rest of the cheese. And I love Christmas morning. I love everything about Christmas. I usually am one of those people that are a little bit crazy and decorate in October. But I just love the Christmas season because it's all about celebrating Jesus. And so you can't go wrong with a season that's all about celebrating Jesus. But I love it because everywhere you go, it seems like there's praise music on, even though a lot of times it's just Christmas music, we're really singing about the Lord. And so that's my favorite thing about it. So this is gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees, covered for 30 to 35 minutes. Then you'll wanna uncover it and you wanna bake it for another 10 minutes just until it's nice and golden brown on the top. One of my favorite ways to be balanced during the holidays is to choose my treats wisely. The holidays are often filled with an abundance of food. So instead of eating everything in sight, I like to carefully pick that one dish or treat that means the most and fill the rest of my plate with nutritious options. I also like to bring a healthy dish to pass, which is always a great way to start a conversation about eating healthy. So now we're on to my monkey bread. And this is one of Sean's all-time favorites. And I make it for any kind of special occasion that we have, especially in the morning, instead of cinnamon rolls. He loves French toast, cinnamon rolls, anything cinnamon and sugar. And so if you don't know what monkey bread is, really it's just dough balls that are drenched in syrup and sugar and cinnamon. So I know you're thinking, how can that be healthy? Well, this version is, it's only three grams of sugar for each monkey bread, instead of the typical 30 grams of sugar. It also has only 150 calories versus 400 calories. 
So you can already tell that it's gonna be much better for you. But the thing I love about it is that eating healthy also makes you feel better. So we won't wanna all go take a nap right after we eat. Well, it's Christmas, so I guess we could. But anyway, we're gonna start with our dry ingredients and we're gonna add one and three-fourths cup of oat flour. And then we have three-fourths cup of almond flour. So I'm gonna do one-fourth cup and then I'm gonna do a half cup of almond flour. And almond flour is ground up almonds ground into flour. So I love the combination of oat flour and almond flour because it gives a really good texture. It gives you that, that nuttiness that you're looking for, the, the moisture is added back in through the fat of the almonds, so it's not dried out at all. And this is a really great basic dough for really anything that you can imagine. And then I'm gonna do a half cup of stevia. And I like to use baking stevia. If you wanna use coconut sugar or any type of sweetener, you could in this recipe as well. And then I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of baking soda and a half teaspoon of baking powder. And that just helps this dough to rise up a little bit and also be soft and fluffy like you'd imagine monkey bread. And then a half teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna stir together my dry ingredients. And I only like to dirty one bowl, so I always just do my dry ingredients first, stir them up, then add my wet ingredients. So for this, instead of using butter or oil, we already have some fat from the almond flour, so it's gonna add that moisture in so that it won't be dry. All we have to do is add just a little bit of applesauce in order to kind of bind everything together and one egg. So it's a really simple recipe. You could also make this dough the night before, roll it into balls, and then just bake it the morning of. So that's something that I would typically do the night before Christmas. And what we kind of have a tradition going ever since Sean and I got married, well, at first when we got married, we really had a struggle because I thought, okay, where are we gonna spend Christmas? How are we gonna do all this? We didn't have kids yet. So I thought, I don't know where we're gonna go on Christmas. So what we did was we tried to separate it into like three different houses and it was terrible. I ended up crying. We were in the car the entire day driving and it was the worst snowstorm. And I was like, this is not Christmas. So then after that, we decided we're gonna break up the days. We had Christmas Eve at Sean's house and with his family and then Christmas Day with my family. And so it's a really great way to kind of, you know, get to see everybody. And I love Christmas because you get to see people that you haven't seen in a long time, whether it's family or friends, and it's a great time to gather together. So we're just gonna stir this up until it forms a dough. And then, and it'll kind of be almost as you'd imagine a cookie dough once it's combined. And then we're gonna have a sous chef join me, my husband, Sean. He is the one who cooks for, with me every single Christmas morning. He wakes up early and he's in the kitchen getting things ready before the whole house wakes up. So he's gonna join me. He's gonna help me make this monkey bread. And we're gonna also make some holiday style coffee creamer. So it's early Christmas morning and I just woke up my sous chef. And do you love being my sous chef on Christmas I morning? Love it. That all started, it used to be Emily. And then Emily had her son Easton, like what was it, a week before Christmas. And so she could not wake up early. She was up all night. So I said, all right, Sean, this year you're my sous chef. So he is my trained sous chef ever since. <laughs> on Christmas morning. So the rest of the house is still sleeping. So we're gonna get started on the monkey bread so we can pop it in the oven before everyone gets up. All right, so we have our dough made for the monkey bread here. And it's really easy. All I want you to do is take uh, probably a little smaller than golf ball size balls. Okay, I know that size. And, and roll it up. Then I have some stevia and some cinnamon, one tablespoon of each in a bowl that I mix together. And I have you roll the balls. Size? That's perfect. Okay. Into that mixture there, and then just pop them into this baking dish. All right. And that's enough. it. Yeah. And then you can fill up each one just until the dough is done. So probably about three or four balls in each. Okay. Then we have some maple syrup here that we're going to pour over the top before they go into the oven. We're only going to pour about three fourths of it, and then the rest will pour when they come out of the oven, just to really give it that syrupy flavor. So I'll let you get to work on those. Okay. And I'm going to make a holiday coffee creamer. What I love about this creamer is it's 
really just a few simple ingredients and this is the actually the recipe that I created to get rid of my one bad habit that I just couldn't ditch and that was coffee creamer. I used all of the sugar-free chemical laden coffee creamers and I just couldn't get rid of it. It was like my one thing. But then I was like, I, I know I can make this at home. And so my, my absolute favorite was the holiday flavored coffee creamers. I looked forward to them all year. I think I started drinking them usually around September. Yep, so this spice. is a gingerbread version, but on Dashing Dish you can find peppermint mocha, you can find pumpkin spice, you can find all different flavors, eggnog even. So you'll never have to go out and buy that stuff again with all the, I mean just read the ingredient list and you'll just be shocked. You'll never drink it again hopefully after trying this one. So we have two tablespoons of maple syrup and again just monk fruit sweetened maple syrup is what I used but you could use organic. Then two tablespoons of baking stevia. Now you could use any kind of sweetener for this again and it's really to taste for this recipe. Then I'm gonna do one half teaspoon of ginger. And you wanna get the dry ginger for this recipe because it'll mix really well. If you did the fresh, it probably would be too wet and sticky. And then I'm gonna do one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. I love pumpkin pie spice because it's a blend of different spices. So it kind of saves you some time there. You don't have to go out and fish a million different spices out of your pantry. You just have one spice and it's all combined. So pumpkin pie spice is what to look for. One teaspoon in there and see just a few simple ingredients and then we're going to shake it up. And it tastes just like gingerbread because of that dry ginger in there. And then all the different spices in the pumpkin pie spice give it that the cloves, that flavor that you'd expect in gingerbread creamer. Another favorite holiday tradition is our annual blessing mobile. My friends and I started this tradition a few years back. We gather together during the Christmas season and we go into a few different local stores to hand out gift cards. This simple act of generosity often opens the door for us to pray with people and share about Jesus. Regardless of the holiday, traditions can be a powerful way to look beyond ourselves and demonstrate the love of God to those who need it most. Ever since we had Maddie, I, I have to have coffee in the morning. So yeah, that's true. Ever since you started making it for me, I've learned how to make it myself, but you make it extra special. And speaking of Maddie, what do you love most now that we have Maddie about Christmas with her? Oh gosh. Uh, I mean, obviously I love watching her uh, open up, you know, her gifts and just seeing the excitement that she has for each, each thing, you know, and, but I think more than anything, uh, you know, just being able to share with her the, the story of Jesus and his birth, and she's just so fascinated by that. She's probably a little bit more fascinated with the, with the, <laughs> the sheep, but. It's true, it's true. But it's such a gift to be able to teach our kids about the Lord. Yeah. And the true gift of the season, which yes. is Jesus. And what is your favorite holiday tradition? Oh boy. Uh, well, ever since, yeah, ever since a few years ago, or, or actually, I think about five or six years ago, we started, yeah, go ahead. Um, we started going to get Christmas trees around my birthday. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. I know most people, you know, they, 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 they wait till December 1st, but we like to get ours early November. So yeah. uh, we, we, <laughs> every time we do it, there's, it's always an adventure because we, we have, uh, we put One the time the tree almost fell off the back yeah, of my jeep. Every year it seems like it's always gonna fall off the back of the we're, jeep. We're always praying our <laughs> whole way home. We usually get ours from a place that's about an hour from our house. Yeah. And then we're praying the entire time home. <laughs> so. Looking through the sunroof, making sure. Well, what about that one Christmas that you, um, you were helping me cook and then he just disappeared oh, oh into the family room and we don't have to bring that I up. didn't even know he was mo moving furniture all on his yeah. own but let's just say he had a very severe toe injury <laughs> thanks to a very heavy yeah. couch I spent the entire day <laughs> in the ER yeah somewhere. we didn't eat our breakfast on time that morning that yeah. was a late breakfast yeah. but it still turned out to be a really good was, day yeah. didn't it yeah. I was I was pregnant with Maddie then well one of my favorite Christmas traditions is definitely doing this with you. Yeah, I love this. It's something I look forward to every year now, waking up early before the rest of the house. And normally Sean isn't as much of an early riser as I am, but when it comes to Christmas, we're just like little kids. We wake up early. So, well, let's see, this looks good. We're gonna go ahead and, you wanna make sure that all the balls are kind of even in there. You don't want one overly filled because it won't bake up the same. We're gonna fill three-fourths, like I said, with 
or use three-fourths of this syrup to top it. And then we're gonna bake it 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And um, then we'll top it with the rest of the maple syrup. Should we try this coffee? Yeah, let's go ahead. All right. Here's yours, it's a little full. Okay, thank you. You want a rag for your hands? No, that's okay. <laughs> it's perfect, just the way it is. All right, let me know what you think. All right, let's try it. Mm. That's, that's good. good. That's, yeah, that's Tastes just like ginger. ginger. <laughs> <laughs> just like gingerbread, it's good. Well, what are you looking forward to most for this Christmas? Just spending time with family, slowing yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. It's always a really good time to stop and think about others. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes in the midst of our really busy day, we can just get into kind of the mode of thinking about all that we have to do on our to-do list. And then Christmas and the holiday season seems to slow everything down. Yeah. You gather together with people that you really, that mean the most to you. And then you actually spend time thinking about different ways that you can give back. And I think the whole reason behind that is because we think about our generous savior who came to earth just for us so that he could be given and, and present his life as a sacrifice, which is the ultimate gift. And then now it gets us thinking about ways that we can give to others as well. All throughout scripture, we can see that food was an important aspect of celebrations. We can also see that Jesus broke bread and regularly had fellowship with people that were closest to him. I believe that this speaks highly to the fact that gathering together and enjoying meals is an important part of our relationships thriving in Christ. There's nothing more that I love than joining around the Christmas table with my family. Together we're joining to not only celebrate being with one another, but ultimately the greatest gift of all, Jesus. From our family to yours, Merry Christmas. Dad, would you mind saying the Christmas blessing? Sure. Father, we just joined together and we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. And we thank you for the, that it is truly the reason for the season. We thank you, Lord God, for our family and for the food that you set before us. And we ask that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dad. All right, let's eat. Who wants, who wants some monkey bread or some egg bakes? I'd like some. Let's try some egg bakes. All right, hand me your plate.